I believe that our thoughts create our lives, but that our words indicate what we're thinking. You know, everyone wants to live a happy, joyous, and successful life, but most people walk around with this negative soundtrack called complaining, running in their heads, and as a result, most people live way below their potential for happiness, love, and success. It's been said that a person who constantly says that life is going to be bad runs the risk of becoming a prophet. And that was certainly my story. I was raised in a family where negativity and complaining were simply how we connected with each other. I mean, literally. Psychologists say that we all have a style of attaching to other people based on combinations of anxiety and avoidance. Well, our family was high anxiety and low avoidance. We connected with each other by always having problems, both ourselves and with each other, and we complained incessantly about our problems. Scientists believe people complain for only one of five reasons, as remembered by the acronym GRIPE. Get attention, remove responsibility, inspire envy, power, and excuse poor performance. Well, I was the middle child of a complaining family, so I complained all the time to get attention. Not just at home, I complained to friends and to teachers. It became a habit, it became part of who I am. As I got older, I complained to girlfriends and employers, anyone who would listen, because this was the only way I knew to connect with other people. Although I got the attention I craved, I was empty and I was sad most of the time. Everywhere I went, I was like a huge ship leaving a wake of hurt feelings and broken relationships, lost jobs, missed opportunities. In 2006, I was teaching a class on prosperity and I realized that most people want greater prosperity. That is, they want more stuff but they complain about what they already have. They complain about their health, their jobs, their spouse, the weather, the local sports team, and yet they don't appreciate what they already have. Wayne Dyer put it so well. He said, if you're not happy with what you have, why would you want more? <laughs> I handed out 250 of these little complaint-free bracelets, inviting people to use them as a tool to measure their success at going 21 consecutive days without complaining. Because many psychologists believe it takes 21 days to form a new habit. Well, this little idea that I was simply blessed to have come up with exploded around the world. And so far, we've sent out more than 11 million complaint-free bracelets to 106 countries. I was unbelievably blessed to have been on Oprah, The Today Show, CBS Sunday Morning, the ABC Evening News, Fox News, and the Dr. Oz Show. Stories about me and the complaint-free movement have been written about in thousands of newspapers and magazines worldwide, including People, Newsweek, The Wall Street Journal, and even Chicken Soup for the Soul. Since the complaint-free program began, we use Dr. Maya Angelou's quote, If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Don't complain, as our slogan. And Dr. Angelo was gracious enough to be awarded the six millionth complaint-free bracelet. Our free program, Complaint-Free Organizations, has been downloaded and implemented by thousands of companies and organizations, ranging all the way from a small hair salon in Houston to Fortune 100 companies like General Electric and Aflac. Churches, temples, mosques, and spiritual centers of every description all over the world have handed out complaint-free bracelets to their followers, and thousands of schools have taken on the complaint-free challenge using our free complaint-free kids curriculum. Why? 
you may ask yourself, why did a simple idea like this become what people have called a worldwide phenomenon? I believe it's for two reasons. Number one, there's too much complaining in the world. And number two, the world isn't the way we would like it to be. Well, I believe that the two are correlated, that we spend so much time focusing on what's wrong in our lives by complaining that we actually perpetuate all this bad stuff and even create more. And this gives us even more to complain about. And the whole thing becomes a vicious cycle of habitual complaining and an unfulfilling life. Habitual complaining and an unfulfilling life. I believe we can change. In fact, I know we can. I've seen it in my own life and in the thousands of people who have called, emailed, and even flown thousands of miles to tell me in person. This simple mindful act of placing a complaint-free bracelet on either wrist and then switching it to the other wrist with every spoken complaint until you've gone 21 days without switching makes us aware of our negativity. It sets a trap for our complaints and it causes us to become happier people. In fact, the most frequent comment I hear is how much happier people are as a result of taking the 21-day challenge. And isn't that what we all want? Happiness? I believe it is. I think behind all of the goals and the vision boards and the wish lists of everything we think we want is a belief that having these things will make us somehow happier. But what good is more stuff, a better body, a nicer car, or anything going to do us if we're complaining about everything? We'll never be happy. I believe that our own happiness is the greatest gift we can give other people. More than that, studies have shown that happiness is a shortcut to success. You see, it's not that successful people become happy. It's that happy people become successful. And you can't be a happy person if you're constantly complaining. I believe that our thoughts create our lives and that our words indicate what we're thinking. And I believe you can change your words, change your thoughts, and create the life that you have always dreamed.